Now, I don't want to show our age, but I think you've done a little bit of that already. You mentioned, and I think it's in one of you, it's in, I think it's in your first video on your channel, you, you talk about the golden age of hacking. Can you explain why, what that is and how things have changed? Yeah, that's, that's a, a long, I mean, it could be a, an answer that lasts days if we wanted to. Um, <laughs> I would say back in, the, like when I first got into this, there were no exploit mitigations. Windows XP was out, it had just come out. Windows 98 and stuff is probably still around. But um, Linux was on very unsafe, versions there there was no protections like common protections like safe unlink is a heat protection that protects the allocators it's where it, it works with the metadata to protect like right what where primitive based attacks and like all of this basic mitigation that we count on today was completely missing back then so that means if you find a vulnerability and it's something that can be weaponized there is nothing that can stop you i mean this was back when firewalls if you had them on a client system again a big if was only doing outbound filter or inbound filtering i mean not outbound at all and i remember i i moved to san francisco from baltimore maryland in the early 2000s and i lived on a place called treasure island and I was lucky where there was a bunch of techie people. This was San Francisco, right? When the dot-com collapse had occurred and tons of techie people. And so it was a really neat community. I guess you could say it was a intersection of people that go to Burning Man and the artistic types with, I remember one of the guys that managed the site rotten.com was there and some of the cult of the day cow people and lots of hackers. And so we were just like oh, wow. hacking at each other all the time. And I remember when Metasploit came out, I think it was 2003, and MS03026, which was Blaster, the MSRPC DCOM, the infamous bug, that was one of the first vulnerability or exploits ported into Metasploit. And you could literally find a Windows system, like do a NMAP scan and just type the IP address in, load the module, say exploit, and you get a shell on your screen. Yeah. And and it, yeah. it, it worked 95% of the time. You would just get shells anytime you want because there was no filtering and there were no patching. There was no patching happening. And so what I mean by the golden age is pretty much that. It was it was there was limited, if any, security filtering, firewalls, intrusion detection, prevention, all of that was all pretty new. Their patch management was even worse than it is today, which is saying something. <laughs> there were no exploit mitigations and it was just easy. You didn't have to know anything at all if you wanted to do hacking. Yeah, I think you, I think you said that um, I, it's the operating system that a lot of people hate, but you said there was some good in Vista, is that right? Vista? Yeah, so Microsoft has this interesting situation, at least it seems that way, where every other operating system is <laughs> successful. And, yeah, and yep. you know what I'm saying, right? It's like yep. XP was yep. super successful. People loved it. Vista, people didn't yep. like it. Why? Because UAC and some other things. And then they try to like tone it down a bit with Service Pack 1. People are like, nope, I already made up my mind. So then Windows 7 comes out, which is very similar, if not the same kernel as Vista. And people love Windows 7. And then Windows 8 comes out, they remove the start button, the tile menu appears and people get stuck. And they say, oh, we're sorry. They put it back in 8.1, too bad. 8 already got a bad reputation. Windows 10 comes out, people love it. And now we've got Windows 11. And I don't see that one taking off, at least not, not so far. Yeah, it was a Vista was the first operating system from Microsoft that underwent their security development life cycle uh, that came out yeah. in the early 2000s. And so address space layout randomization came out and other big mitigations. I think I've heard you say that um, Bill Gates changed the way that security was implemented around that time. And that's why Vista, even though people hated it, did some great stuff from a security point of view. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, it, I think it was called the Trustworthy Computing Memo or email. It was this infamous memo that came out from Bill Gates. I think it was 2002 or 2003. And that time was when Patch Tuesday started up and also the security development life cycle, which was all about mapping security processes into each phase of the development life cycle. So if you would have something like your design phase, which is a standard phase in the development life cycle, you would factor in things like attack surface reduction and threat modeling. And you would talk about secure cryptographic design and all these things that you would decide on before you move into the implementation phase where you actually start writing the code, which you map in security, like which exploit mitigations are you going to use and which banned functions are you not going to use and what static code analysis are you going to do when things cross trust boundaries. So Vista was the first OS 
to, to undergo that process from start to finish. So yeah, it was a much more robust operating system from a security perspective. So in other words, even though people hated what happened at that time, it, Windows has got a lot more secure since that time. And that's what's made, as you said, the golden age kind of end. Is, is, is that fair to say? Yeah, and it's not, yeah, absolutely. And it's not just Windows. I mean, obviously, Apple has done a much better job. I, I saw a talk recently yeah. uh, by a, a researcher saying that the use after free bug class that they were able to depend on to be able to do the jailbreaks and such are pretty much coming to an end. And I guess you could say sadly from some, one perspective and, and gladly from another perspective, uh, the Linux, same way, it's the phones as well. That, that's why you see the bounties on things like a, a Android zero day or an iPhone zero day that allows you to do remote code execution, getting up into the seven figures, which is amazing.